ladies and gentlemen once again welcome back to our channel and the topic for today's COBOL tutorial is COBOL compilation process this tutorial is divided into five different section first one is introduction to compilation process then we'll talk about steps which is involved in compiling a standalone COBOL program and in third section we'll talk about COBOL DB2 compilation process in this section we will see what is db2 pre-compiler and what are the different steps which is involved in compiling a COBOL db2 program. And in fourth section we will focus on COBOL KICKS compilation process and what are the steps involved in compiling a COBOL KICKS program. The last section is dedicated to COBOL IMS compilation process and version control tools. Ok, so before I start with today's presentation, I would request you all to do subscribe to our channel because we need your support to grow our channel. And I would like to say a big thank you to all our subscribers who have already subscribed to our channel. So let's begin our today's tutorial with introduction to compilation process. So the first question is, what is a compiler? So in layman's term, a compiler is a program that converts high-level program into a low-level machine language that can be understood and executed by a computer. And each and every language has its own compiler. So the compilation process is actually divided into four different stages or you can say it's divided into four different categories. The first one is syntax scanning, second one is semantic analysis, third one is code optimization and the fourth one is code generation. So in nutshell, a COBOL program has to go through all these phases or stages before it actually get translated into an object code that can be executed on mainframe or personal computer. So you need to remember that a compiler is actually an integral and important part of any programming language. And without compiler, you cannot run or execute your program on any of the platform, whether it's mainframe, Windows, Unix, whatever it is. Now let's move on to the next section that is COBOL program compilation process. Okay, so in this section, we will focus on the steps which is required to compile a simple COBOL program. When I say simple, it means that this program do not have any functionality related to IMS, DB2 or KICKS. In general, there are two steps which is involved in compiling a COBOL program. So first one is compile and the second one is link edit. So in the first step, the COBOL compiler read the source code, validate all the syntax and generate the object code. And if your program is using a copybook, then it would be inserted into the program during this phase. And if program compiles without any syntax error, then only the second step can be performed. In the second step, the linkage editor link the object module with any subprogram that is required by the program. So a subprogram could be a system program or it could be a COBOL subprogram. But remember, if you are including a COBOL subprogram, then you have to compile COBOL subprogram before compiling the main program. Finally, the output of link edit step is a load module that can be executed via JCL. Now let's quickly move on to the next section that is COBOL DB2 program compilation process. In this section, we will focus on what are the steps which is required to compile a COBOL DB2 program. However, the process of compiling COBOL DB2 program is similar to standalone COBOL program. But before you compile a program that access DB2 data, you must run the DB2 pre-compiler to translate the SQL statement into COBOL statement that can invoke DB2 functions. So you might be thinking that why you need a DB2 pre-compile step before compiling your COBOL DB2 program. So the answer to your question is that COBOL compiler cannot recognize SQL statements. And it's not about COBOL compiler only. Most of the programming language compiler cannot recognize SQL statement. So you need a special mechanism to handle SQL statement in your COBOL program. So the entire process is divided into three stages. So the first one is DB2 pre-compiling stage. In this stage, a source program is prepared for the compilation process. And there are two major actions 
that is performed during this stage. First one is replace the SQL statement in the source program with calls to the DB2 language interface module. Second, create a database request module from the SQL statement which is extracted from the source program. Finally, the output of pre-compiled stage is DBRM which will be feed into bind process and a modified source code which would be feed into normal COBOL compilation process. Now let's move on to stage 2. In this stage, the COBOL compiler compiles the modified source program into an object module. The last stage is link edit stage. In this stage, the linkage editor link the object module with other required modules that includes DB2 interface modules. And remember, before the load module can be executed, though a DB2 must bind the program. You must bind a program directly into an application plan or into a package and then into an application plan. That depends on your project. Now let's look at the flow diagram of COBOL DB2 compilation process so that you can have a good understanding of entire process. So on top you have COBOL DB2 program source code which is feed into DB2 pre-compiler that is stage 1. DB2 pre-compiler generates two output first one is modified source code and database request module. The modified source is compiled by a COBOL compiler to generate the object module. And finally, the object module is feed into linkage editor step where the load module is generated. Now the DBRMs that includes the SQL statement which is extracted from the source program should be bind before they get executed. The DB2 bind process establish a relationship between an application program and its relation data. This step is necessary before you execute your program. And currently, DB2 allow two basic ways of binding a program. First one is to a package and the second one is directly to an application plan. But that depends on your project guidelines. Last but not the least, the DBRM is kept as a member of personal dataset and is given the name of the program. It also contains a consistency token to distinguish it from the other DBRMs that is derived from the previous version of the program. Now let's move on to the next section that is COBOL KIX compilation process. In this section, we will focus on the different steps which is required to compile a COBOL KIX program. So when you write a KIX program, you request KIX services by issuing KIX command and each command should be included within exec CICS and end CICS. So again, a COBOL compiler cannot process KIX command directly. So an additional step is required to convert your program into an executable code and this step is called translation. Finally, before you compile the COBOL KIX program, you must translate it and then you can compile and link edit the translated program as a normal COBOL program. The KIX translator replaces the exec CICS commands with COBOL move and call statements that can be compiled by the COBOL compiler. The COBOL KIX program compilation process is a three step process. So the first step is KIX translation. The KIX translator convert each KIX command into a suitable COBOL statement that invokes the CICS service quantify by that command. The translator also insert the code into your program. One such block of code is execute interface block. The field of execute interface block provide the information about the current task. Now in step 2, the COBOL compiler compiles the translated code into an object module. And finally in step 3 that is link edit, the linkage editor link the object module with the kick subprogram that it has called. And before we move to the flow diagram so that you can have a good understanding of COBOL kicks compilation process, I would like to mention that before you run your COBOL kicks program, 
please make sure that you include relevant entries in specific table for example you have PCT table then you have PPT table and FCT table right so now let's move on to the next section which is a flow diagram of COBOL kicks compilation process as you can see you have a COBOL kicks program that has used kicks command to invoke the kicks services so the source code is feed into the kicks translator which is the first step and the kicks translator translate the source code by replacing the exec CICS commands with relevant COBOL move and call statements so if you look at the right hand side of your screen you have a translated code example in this case the translator has replaced the receive map command with equivalent COBOL move and call statement the output of kicks translator is a translated or a modified code now the COBOL compiler compiles the translated code into an object module and finally at the last stage the linkage editor link edit the object module with a kicks sub program that it has called and generate the load module that can be executed now ladies and gentlemen till now you have learned three important compilation process first one is standalone COBOL compilation process second one is COBOL DB2 compilation process and the third one is COBOL kicks compilation process now before we move to COBOL IMS compilation process I have a quick question for you what would be the sequence of steps to compile a COBOL kicks program that access DB2 database please do mention your answers in the comment section now let's move on to the next section that is COBOL IMS compilation process so the compilation of a program that use IMS database depend on the type of program that is either it's a batch or online program and the language in which it is written for example you have designed your program in COBOL PL1 or in Java or maybe any other language so again for an online program you must translate compile and bind your program before it can be executed so following are the steps that is required to prepare your program for execution so the first one is the kicks translation where you're going to use kicks translator to translate all your exit DLI and exit CICS command and the second one is you'll use COBOL compiler to compile the modified code and the third one is that you'll use a bind process to bind your batch or BMP program with the IMS interface module so for COBOL IMS batch program you need to compile and bind COBOL code to the IMS language interface module so to bind the language interface with application program you can use IMS supplied procedure so that is IMS COBOL or IMS COBGO so IMS COBOL is a two-step procedure that compiles and bind your program however IMS COBGO is a three-step procedure that compile bind and execute your program in IMS batch region so after going through all these technical details you might be thinking that it's a bit difficult to memorize or remember all these steps which is performed while compiling your COBOL DB2 program or COBOL kicks program or COBOL IMS program but the simple solution to all these uh, technical jargons that we have discussed till now is version control tools such as changemen and endeavor so these version control tools are generally used to maintain your program and they do most of the work for you for example compiling your COBOL DB2 program COBOL kicks program COBOL IMS program the only thing is that you need to select the correct parameters when you are staging your code for the first time last but not the least so before you compile your COBOL program uh, with the help of these version control tools make sure that you have uh, copy books RTT entries PSB entries defined properly do follow the project guidelines for uh, the DB2 plan package and the commit frequencies so it is always good that you should stick to what is being defined by your project now ladies and gentlemen this marks an end to our today's presentation and i would request you all to do subscribe to our channel and in case if you have any questions then please mention that in the comment section i'll going to respond back after this presentation last but not the least i would like to say a big thank you uh, for listening so patiently and do visit our youtube channel for more such videos on COBOL programming tutorials and jcl tutorials kicks tutorials and other mainframe technology tutorials thank you